Hi, welcome to Paper Cuts with Colleen. Today, we're going to be talking about composition. So this is kind of where everything, all the clippings, all the collecting, everything that you've thought about, about your collages starts to come together. So how I start generally, my step one is to on my work surface, um, I usually like to create a background. It just kind of helps me um, allow the collages to kind of get sorted out from everything else that's on my desk. And I like to do that by using um, just a solid color piece of paper. It doesn't really matter what color um, background you're working on, whatever kind of draws you in. I usually either start with a black or a white piece of paper and I set it up on my desk and I kind of start from there. So this process is kind of intuitive. It's kind of just trial and error. See what you like, see what draws your eye in. Uh, my biggest advice for the starting, the start of any composition is to be open. I tend to try and stay very open during the beginning of any collage and allow whatever kind of pops in my mind to happen. Part of this is making sure that you have a lot of materials that you've collected, a lot of things that you've clipped. That oftentimes helps me and usually one of those will sort of pop in my head and that's how I'll get the start of something. Maybe it's a wedding cake, maybe it's a man that's standing, reaching across, that's got some sort of earth triangle on his head. So these are kind of just some random pieces and parts. Maybe you've um, taped or glued together parts of them. Um, and what, if one of those comes in your head, I just kind of try and go with that. So um, I know that kind of sounds a little bit vague. So as an example, you can also start by kind of having a jumping off point. And some of those jumping off points are ways that you can group or start arranging some of your clippings together that kind of might help you get a thread of an idea or a direction to go in with your collage. So one place to start is to look at some of the clippings, things you have on your desk, things that you've already cut out, or things you find in magazines that have a similar color or pattern. An example of this would be using green as a starting off point as I did here. So I found this border out of a magazine and then this weird anatomical like directional arrow thing, an alligator because of course, and um, this green kind of plant pattern. So all of those things like in and of themselves aren't related besides the fact they all come back to this green. Um, so I, I started by joining, that is the common thread of this, this piece is that green. Um, and then you can add in other elements um, that might have a little bit of an, an interesting kind of play on those. But that is just one example. This is not even a final collage, just something that I've um, pieced together that's laying on my desk. So I have no clue how it's gonna come out. So one example of using pattern or color in a final collage that I've done is this one here. So in this collage, you can see I'm using the fur of the cat, the pattern within the actual cat, and I'm finding that in repeated images that I've also clipped out. So there's multiple kind of fur jackets that I've also found, and that color, that kind of, um, bronzy gold is also repeated in this can. So all of those things start to work together and it's a way that I've grouped those items together to begin to start uh, putting together the composition. So one way would be pattern or color as a grouping. Another way that you can kind of group like clippings or um, images together is through angle. This one takes a little bit more practice and this is beginning to spot the way, the perspective of the, of the shot and see if there's a similar perspective among different images. So you can see in this collage, there's a lot going on. There's a background image of a, like a forest. It looks like almost like a redwood forest. Um, and it just so happens that the direction that we're being led in this, the direction our eye is going in, is the same direction that I found this like very strange like pink man on some sort of like primitive <laughs> treadmill. And so to me, I thought, wow, that's really like an, it's very interesting and very specific. And it allows both of those images to feel like they're unified in their angle. So, um, so those were kind of the initial starting off point of like, these are these are like eerily similar. And sometimes you'll just 
be drawn to things like that. Like some arms will be in a similar direction or um, the way that the head, a head is facing will match the body of and the facing in the same direction. That's a really great point to kind of start from. And with this one, I also found this cake, which is super delicious. And this cake is like, was on this very strange angle on a table and the lighting of it, the coloration of it really felt like it was at home with this, with this man. Um, and even the way that the shadows are cast are very similar, although not exactly the same um, as they're being cast on him. So this is a really good example of using angle or perspective to unify clippings or magazine images, book images, whatever, um, into beginning to create a composition. So an example of this also just kind of for perspective right here would be this. So this is one image of a, um, I don't know, it looks like some sort of sand or earth with a sky. And then I found like some really old school, kind of amazing um, computer here. So kind of the way that they sit or the perspective of it makes it so that it feels like they, they could possibly be at home together. I'm not exactly sure that this, that this would work, but this is kind of a way to start. This is a starting off point. And you can see using it on this white piece of paper allows you to kind of begin to see it in the space, begin to see what else is kind of, um, what else, what else, you could add to it to make it a really rich composition. So one other way that you can begin to unify images is by finding a like theme or like or a like subject. So one example of that would be this collage I did. And in this collage, I actually had over time accumulated a lot of clippings of um, various camera and camera parts, lenses, bodies, just flashes. Flashes are a really huge and interesting thing to collect. And the perspective and the angle of a lot of those lenses began to kind of lend themselves to this, um, the body of this man that I found. Um, the, the clouds is the background. That one isn't necessarily the same in terms of theme or um, perspective, but it just kind of felt at home. And that was really just like trial and error of trying this you know, photo head man on a whole bunch of different things until I felt like it was, it matched, it felt right. So you can see these, these have all been cut out separately and are kind of from various different sources. Um, and that's one way that you can group them together. So those are kind of some three jumping off points. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's where you start, you know, all of your collages from, but it's a great way to just get started, to get something going. And, um, you know, as you work, you can pull things from your desk and start seeing what's going on. This is another way, you know, there's, um, I have, you know, no clue. This is kind of just, just kind of doing this. Um, and piecing and playing, this is a really fun process of just practice of what's, what's gonna go where, what looks good with what. Um, that's gonna be your biggest, ally in the whole process of collaging is like crazy, weird, strange things are going to happen. Maybe it's that you've been really wanting this, this like kid's hair right next to this hand with these legs behind it. I don't know. There's a thousand million trillion possibilities. And this is just one of them that I've come up with. I, I tend to believe that we have seen so many images in our lives on a daily basis. We are all kind of intuitive experts on what we are drawn to, what looks good, what draws us in, um, what makes an impact on us. And if you want to get good at composition, if you want to get good at trying new things, then just take a moment and pause when you see an image, when you see a billboard, when you see something on social media that really just uh, makes you pause for a minute. Just stop and kind of look at where the placement, where where the image is, what the perspective is. And, um, and then, you know, even take some of those things that you've learned or those kind of really strong compositional ideas um, and, and try them in collage. It's a really great direct way that you can just you know, put something else together in a completely new and different way that was completely different than something you did two minutes ago. Um, there's no harm, there's no foul. It is, it is just a process of figuring 
um, and figuring it out and what makes sense. So here's another one that I just <laughs> just came up with. And, you know, of course, some are stronger than others. Um, and that's kind of the, the fun of the whole thing. Maybe we make it standing on here. Maybe we add this in. This is the fun of it. This is the real play, practice, try, do. Make some that you think are terrible. Ask your friends what they think. Um, this is the fun, get your hands dirty part of collage that I really love. So those are a few of my tips and tricks about composing a solid composition for collage. So go out, have fun, clip, collage, compose, and enjoy. And if you wanna see more of my work, check it out online, it's everywhere. And if you wanna take a look at my Patreon page, you can find it right here. All your support is so appreciated. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day.